Yes, so hello there and welcome to this class. Now in this class, let's look at some questions in titration and let's begin with the first question as you can see. So the first question is asking, in a titration experiment, 25 centimeters cubed of 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide was pipetted in a conical flask. So this fluid was, uh, was placed or was put inside a conical flask by the use of the pipette. So after that, we are being told that 0.1 molar hydrochloric acid was then titrated using the solution in the conical flask, whereby the phenolphthalein indicator was used to determine the end point of the reaction. So only two drops of the phenolphthalein indicator were used in this process to determine the end point of the reaction. So remember, for the phenolphthalein indicator, in presence of an acid, it is colorless. In presence of neutral solution, it is also colorless. But in presence of a basic solution, the phenolphthalein indicator changes color to pink. So that's why during this experiment, as soon as uh, we had put the sodium hydroxide inside the conical flask, we saw that sodium hydroxide is colorless. But as soon as we added two drops of phenolphthalein indicator, so the sodium hydroxide inside the conical flask changed color from colorless to color pink. So this means that phenolphthalein indicator in a basic solution is pink in color. So let's continue with the question. So the question is saying, below is a table of experiment one, experiment two, and experiment three of the three titrations that were carried out in this experiment. So as you can see, uh, this is the table. So the table, we have the final burette reading. We have the initial burette reading. So the initial burette reading, this is the main, uh, this is the first reading that we record before we begin the titration experiment. So uh, to determine this initial reading, we check the volume of the acid inside the burette or the volume of the fluid inside the burette before the experiment begins and we record that volume. Like for example, in all our experiment, experiment one, experiment two, experiment three, we are going to assume that our initial burette reading, so the first reading before we, be we begin each experiment, that is one, two, and three, so we are going to assume that the initial burette reading in all experiment is 0.0. .0. So that's what you are going to begin with. So apart from that, the final burette reading is the reading uh, whereby this is the final reading we check or we record after the end point of the reaction has been reached or after the end point of the experiment has been reached. So what is the end point? So the end point of the reaction, this is the point where the color of the indicator will show a different change in color or basically the color of the indicator is going to change from this color to that color. So in this case, we are using phenolphthalein indicator. So since we are using the phenolphthalein indicator, so as soon as the phenolphthalein indicator in the experiment changes from pink to colorless, we are going to say that the end point of the reaction has been reached. So the end point of the reaction, this is simply the point whereby uh, the acid and the base have become neutral. Or simply we can say that this is whereby the acid and the, yeah, basically the acid and the base have become neutral, which is basically denoted by a color change of the indicator. So in this case, we have the final burette reading, the initial burette reading, and the volume used. So the volume used in the experiment, this is now the total volume used in the experiment, whereby we get to know this by checking the final reading of the burette. So after having the final reading of the burette, and we know our initial volume that was used in that experiment, so we're going to say, Final burette reading uh, subtracted or minus the initial burette reading in order to get the volume used in that specific experiment, be it number one, number two, or number three. So again, to find the volume used in each experiment, we are going to say final burette reading minus the initial burette reading, and therefore we are going to get now the volume used in that experiment. So mind you, we have three titrations. Titration one, it has its own final and initial and the volume used. We have titration two, it has its own final, initial, and the volume used. And then finally, we have the titration three, it has its own uh, final, initial, and the volume used. So the other thing that you should know is that it is not a must that titration experiments to have three titrations. It can have even four, it can have even five, it can have even two, only two titrations. 
So you should take note not uh, to depend that they, are, they must be three. They can be more than three, they can be less than three. So let's now continue with the table. So filling the table automatically gives you three marks or depending on what the examiner is asking. But mostly filling the table, you are going to get three marks. So after filling the table, so we'll assume our value. So the first value is going to be 24. The second value of the final reading, titration 2, is going to be 25. Then the third value uh, for titration in titration 3 is going to be 26. So the final volume is 24 for titration 1, 25, titration 2, 26 for titration 3. So we say that we are going to assume that all our initial values will be 0.0, .0 so that is right. So how now do you calculate the volume used in the experiment? So the volume used in titration 1, titration 2, titration 3. So to calculate the volume used in each experiment, you are going to say final burette reading minus the initial burette reading to get now the volume used in the experiment. So like in this case, for the titration 1, we have 24 minus 0, 0.0. 24 the final reading minus 0, 0.0, the initial burette reading. So the volume used in titration 1 is going to be 24. So after that, we have titration 2, uh, whereby the final volume of the burette reading was 25. So the initial volume was 0, 0.0. Therefore, it will mean that the volume used in this case will be 25.0. So the next one is 26.0. That's the final for titration 3. Initial is 0, 0.0. Then after that, the volume used in this case is going to be 26.0. So that is all about filling the table in titration. This is always the first question. So the second question is always find the average volume used in the experiment. So how will you find the average volume used? So for the average volume used, it's, it's exactly the same as the finding the mean in mathematics or finding the average in mathematics. So the average volume used. So we're going to go to the column of volume used or the row of volume used. And then we are going to take the final, uh, the volume used of uh, titration 1, the volume used of titration 2, the volume used of titration 3. And then uh, we are going to find the average volume. So just the normal mathematics of calculating the mean. So we're going to say volume of titration 1 plus volume of titration 2 plus volume of titration 3 divided by 3 because we have only three occurrences. So now to find the average volume, you're going to say 24 plus 25 plus 26. That is for the titration 1, 2, and 3. So 24 plus 25 plus 26. So if you take these three and add them, you're going to get 75. So to get our average now, we are going to, uh, to divide by the total occurrences. So we have only three occurrences. So 75 divided by 3, so you're going to get that the average titration is uh, 25 centimeters cubed. So that is the average volume used in this experiment. And that answers our question, find the average volume used in the experiment. That is the answer and that is how to get the answer. So the next question is asking, how many moles of hydrochloric acid reacted in the average titration? So here we've been asked the moles that were contained in the average titration. So remember, the average titration is what we had calculated was 25 centimeters cubed. So we are looking for the moles or we are calculating the moles of hydrochloric acid that were in 25 centimeters cubed. That was the average titration. So what are we going to do? So by here, we are going now to introduce the formula for calculating the moles using molarity and the volume. So what is the formula? So the formula is molarity is equals to moles times a thousand divided by the volume. That is the formula. If we make moles to be the subject of our formula, therefore we're going to say that moles is equals to molarity times volume divided by a thousand. So why did we choose this formula? So we chose this formula because as you can look at the statements that already we have been given. So we already have molarity of hydrochloric acid and we already have the volume of the hydrochloric acid that, was, uh, that reacted in this experiment. So let's now use the formula for moles is equals to molarity times volume over 1000. Basically, by the way, if you use any formula, any of this formula will still give you the correct answer. So in this case, we have the molarity of hydrochloric acid to be 0 0.1 molarity. So we have the volume of hydrochloric acid from the average titration was 25 centimeters cubed. So applying everything in the formula, so we're going to say that 
moles is equals to 0 0.1 molarity of hydrochloric acid uh, then multiplied by the volume which is 25 centimeters cubed divided by a thousand centimeters cubed so in this case what answer are you going to get for moles so if you do your calculations correctly you're going to get your answer as 0 0.0025 moles of hydrochloric acid that was in the average titration that is 25 centimeters cubed so according to this case uh, the 0 0.0025 moles of hydrochloric acid these were the moles that were in 25 centimeters cubed that were responsible for neutralizing 25 centimeters cubed of sodium hydroxide so that is exactly the moles of hcl that reacted in this experiment so since now we have the moles of hydrochloric acid that reacted in the experiment it will be easy for us to know or to calculate the moles of sodium hydroxide also that reacted in the experiment so we can we can basically use two methods for sodium hydroxide we can also use the details given we can say that we had 0 0.1 moles uh, 0 0.1 molarity of sodium hydroxide in 25 centimeters cubed so we can use the same formula for sodium hydroxide to calculate the moles of sodium hydroxide that reacted in this experiment as well since we know the moles of hydrochloric acid that reacted in the experiment we can write the chemical equation and then compare the mole ratios so like in this case we have written the chemical equation whereby in this reaction sodium hydroxide was reacting with hydrochloric acid to get a salt and water so in this case we can just write the chemical equation like as you have seen then after writing the chemical equation balance the chemical equation so like for example we have sodium hydroxide reacting with hydrochloric acid we're going to get sodium chloride plus water molecule so that is the chemical equation so apart from that what else do you do so we know that the moles of hydrochloric acid that we had calculated the moles of hcl was 0.0025 moles so by using the mole ratio we can be able to determine the moles of everything else in the equation so if one for the balancing of the equation that is hydrochloric acid is represented by one sodium hydroxide represented by one basically just the normal balancing of the equation so if hydrochloric acid is represented by one sodium sodium hydroxide is represented by one therefore it will mean that if one is equals to 0 0.0025 for hydrochloric acid what will one for sodium hydroxide represent so if one represents 0 0.0025 what about one for sodium hydroxide so if you cross multiply the normal cross multiplication you are going to get that one represents 0 0.0025 moles of sodium hydroxide that reacted in the experiment so it is as simple as that so for sodium hydroxide remember you can use the information given you can use the information whereby we have molarity and volume of sodium hydroxide so we're going still to apply the formula to get the moles of sodium hydroxide which is 0 0.0025 moles as well apart from that you can use the mole ratio since we know the moles of hydrochloric acid we can use the mole ratio to determine the moles of sodium hydroxide that reacted in the experiment but how do you determine you must balance the equation so if you balance the equation correctly you can be able to use the moles of hydrochloric acid that you know to get the moles of everything else in the equation so that is that question so let's go to the next question which was asking how many moles of sodium hydroxide are in 25 centimeters cubed of 0 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide so we have already calculated the moles so the moles of sodium hydroxide are 0 0.0025 moles again you can use the formula to calculate the moles of sodium hydroxide whereby you say it is only 0 0.1 uh, molarity of sodium hydroxide in 25 centimeters cubed that reacted with hydrochloric acid so you can use the 0 0.1 molarity times the volume which was 25 centimeters cubed divided by a thousand centimeters cubed to get 0, 0.00 moles of sodium hydroxide as well since we know the moles of hydrochloric acid we can write the equation and then use the mole ratio to find the moles of sodium hydroxide that reacted in this experiment so the next question is asking uh, find the mass find the mass of sodium 
chloride that was formed in the equation. So find the mass of sodium hydroxide that were formed in the equation. So how do we calculate the mass? This is the weight. So how do we calculate the mass of sodium chloride that was produced in this equation? So you see that sodium hydroxide reacting with hydrochloric acid, we are going to get sodium chloride plus uh, water molecules. So this question is asking, what is the mass of sodium chloride that was formed in this experiment? So what is the mass? So for you to calculate the mass of sodium chloride formed in this experiment, we should introduce another formula for calculating, or rather another formula to relate mass, relative molecular mass and the moles. So this is how we are going to begin in this question. So this is what we are going to say. Since we know the moles of sodium chloride, the moles of sodium chloride is 0 0.0025 moles. We must know the moles of sodium chloride that were produced in this experiment, and then we compare it to the relative molecular mass to determine the mass of uh, the sodium chloride that was formed. So the formula to be introduced here, we're going to introduce the formula. Moles is equal to mass divided by the relative molecular mass. That is the formula we're going to use here in order to find the mass of the sodium chloride that was formed. So, how did we calculate the moles of sodium chloride? So, remember that equation. So, this equation that we had sodium hydroxide plus hydrochloric acid, we get sodium chloride plus water molecules. Therefore, remember we know the moles of uh, the hydrochloric acid that reacted. So, we used the mole ratio. Mole ratio 1 is to 1 is to 1 is to 1. So we use the mole ratio. If 1 for hydrochloric acid represents 0 0.0025 moles, therefore 1 for sodium chloride represents 0 0.0025 moles of sodium hydroxide, of sodium chloride rather. So in this case we'll say that it is only 0 0.0025 moles of sodium chloride that were produced in the experiment. Therefore, we now know the moles of sodium chloride that were produced in the experiment. So how do we now calculate the mass? So we are going to apply the formula and say that, remember the formula is moles is equal to mass divided by relative molecular mass. So in this case, we are going to say that 0 0.0025 moles of sodium chloride is equal to the mass divided by the relative molecular mass of sodium chloride. Of sodium chloride. So, how do we find the relative molecular mass of sodium chloride? So, relative molecular mass is simply the total mass of the elements in a compound. So, the total mass. For example, in this case, what is the mass of sodium? Sodium is 23 grams. What is the mass of chlorine? Chlorine is 35.5 grams. So, that is the mass of chlorine in this case, 35.5 grams. So, how do you now calculate the moles? So uh, the mass, so for us to calculate the mass in this case, we are going to say that 0 0.0025 moles of sodium chloride is equal to X, whereby X represents the mass. So it's equal to mass divided by, if you add 23 plus 35.5, you are going to get 58.5 grams. So that's the grams you're going to get, 58.5 grams. So in this case, we are only going to cross multiply. So we're going to say 58.5 grams times 0 0.0025 moles. So what answer are we going to get? So 58.5 divided by uh, 58.5 times 0 0.0025. So the answer to get the mass of sodium chloride that was formed in this experiment, so the mass was 0 0.1465 grams. So it is only 0 0.1465 grams of sodium that were produced in this experiment. So that is how to find the mass, to calculate the mass using moles and the relative molecular mass. So apart from that, let's now go to the last question. So the last question is asking, write an equation for the reaction that was formed. That is Roman 1. Write an equation for the reaction that was formed. Already we have the stoichiometric equation, as we can see, that is the equation. So Roman 2 was asking, write an ionic equation for the reaction that was formed. So the second step is asking that we write the ionic equation. So how do you write an ionic equation of the reaction of the reaction that was formed? So remember, for ionic, equi for ionic equations, 
we must uh, remove the spectator ions. How do you know the spectator ions? So the spectator ions, these are the ions whereby the state symbol did not change for the product and the reactant side. So the ions that the state symbol did not change, AMA does not change, those are the spectator ions and you must cancel them out in an ionic equation. So basically for ionic equation what you must realize is that anything that is either solid, liquid or gas you must never break those down into ions. Again, I repeat, anything that, is, uh, that has the state symbol of solid, liquid, or gas, you must never break those down into ions. But anything that has a state symbol of aqueous, you must break it down into ions. So for example, in our equation, we have sodium hydroxide plus hydrochloric acid. So we're going to get sodium chloride plus water molecule in liquid form. Every other thing is aqueous except water molecule, which is in liquid form. So since water is in liquid form, we don't break it down into ions. So in this case, we have the ion of, for sodium hydroxide, we have sodium ion, which is aqueous. Then we have hydroxide ions, uh, which is also aqueous. And then for the hydrochloric acid, we have hydrogen ions, which is aqueous. We have cl uh, chlorine ions, which is aqueous. So for the product side, we also have sodium, which is in aqueous, and then we have chlorine, which is in aqueous. And then after that, finally, we have water molecule, which is in liquid form. So we don't break down water molecule into ions, because that's a liquid and it's not aqueous. So to cancel out the spectator ions, we only cancel what uh, the ions that did not change the state symbol. So if anything has changed state symbol, you don't cancel it out. So let's begin. Sodium on the uh, reactant side is aqueous, sodium on the product side is aqueous. So we cancel out sodium because the state symbol did not change. So we cancel it out. That's a spectator ion. So apart from that, we have the hydroxide, hydroxide which is OH. So here we have hydroxide. On the reactant, on the product side, we have water molecule which is H2O. So the hydroxide is found inside the water which is H2O. So in this case, we'll say that the hydroxide on this side is aqueous. The hydroxide on, that, on the product side to make the water molecule is in liquid form. So we don't cancel out the hydroxide because the state symbol here is aqueous. The state symbol in water is liquid form. So we don't cancel it out. So after that, we have uh, hydrogen ions on this side. So hydrogen ions on the uh, reactant side is aqueous. On the product side, which is making up water, is in liquid form. So we don't cancel out hydrogen ion because it has changed state symbol from aqueous in, reactor, in the reactant to liquid in the water uh, to form the water. We don't cancel it out. So apart from that, let's look at chlorine. So chlorine is the next one. So for chlorine, we see that on the reactant side, chlorine is in aqueous form. On the product side, chlorine also is in aqueous form to make the sodium chloride. So we cancel it out. That's a spectator ion because it did not change the state symbol. So that automatically becomes uh, a spectator ion. So finally, now to write our ionic equation, we only write what has remained, what was not cancelled. So in this case, we are going to have the hydroxide plus hydrogen, then we get water molecule in liquid form. Don't ignore the state symbol. Hydroxide is in aqueous form plus hydrogen in aqueous form, then you are going to get water molecule in liquid form. And that is now the ionic equation for this, uh, for this experiment.